Hello and welcome back to game number four here between Auburn and North Carolina State. North Carolina State taking the last two games back to back, looking to close it out with their third victory here, looking absolutely dominant in those last two. Radiant, you ready for this to game number four? Yeah, and I think, you know, if you're NC State right now, you're looking at that trophy and you're thinking, I want this, and, and they have a very good showing that they're probably going to be able to get it. Yeah, Auburn really going to have to improve their gameplay. They do have a sub coming in this game here. Truxy going to be playing in the top lane. We're going to have to see how he performs. <clears throat> All right, we see the Coxman coming out again, though. Um... Skarner coming out. We'll see if these bands change anywhere. And we were just talking about this as well that you know they really need to change the band phase. Uh, they need to find some kind of answer here. You know whether that's to meet Truxy coming in to answer Whoppers. Is they're going to ban the Nar or you know what they're going to decide to do here? Because uh, when you see how much impact they're having on these games, it looks like impacts up in that top lane. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> <clears throat> Whoppers yeah, I mean, just. <laughs> Top die on that Nar, repeatedly killing him, just joshing and laying the smack down. So far, bans pretty standard from NCS, but Braum going to be a little bit of a change up. First time we're going to see Cyber on something different this series. You can kind of see he does actually have that, you know, does have that three games on that Braum has had a lot of protection for his carries. The first change, but not sure the one I wanted to see, but we'll see what they decide yeah. to do with that. Yeah, and NCS out. has first pick again, so I'm not sure he really wanted to get away, get rid of that Brahm. I think he could have picked it away, really, if he'd wanted it. We'll have to see, though. I do think if they don't ban the Kai'Sa, we will see the Kai'Sa coming out again. Agreed. See here, going to that third band. And we do see the Nar band coming out there. I will, that's pretty acceptable. They do need to change up something and getting them off that Nar and off that Braum is pretty acceptable. They do need the Swain open though and an immediate first pick though. Uh, so I have to kind of see if that's worth, you know, banning out this Braum while leaving the Swain and this Kaisa open. Incredible power picks. Kaisa uh, is open for them to pick, however, so maybe Bubba Hotep does take that for himself. You haven't seen him on the Zaya since game one, however, which he had a fantastic performance on. Ooh, so it is going to be the Kaista for Bubba Hotep. All right, we'll see if they, I mean, it's kind of a good pick here. You, you, you give up the one power pick in a Kaisa or Swain, and you get to pick up the other one on the second rotation. I like this a lot more now because they are making them make choices for what the strong picks are going to be uh, instead of just trading for what they're already playing. Let me see if Robert's going to have some kind of counter to this, as he does actually have, you know, he's been playing a lot. I'm assuming he, you know, will know a little bit more of the champion we decide to play into it. If we do set Caitlyn or, you know, whatever they decide to go for. Nami coming as well. Nami, Kaisa, a little bit of an interesting lane. Have a lot of healing there to kind of help Kaisa out from any of the poke coming in. I think it's kind of changes what you want to pick as an ADC into that. <clears throat> if you go poke or you go team fighting for later. Mm -hmm. All right, hear me out. The ultimate long con, it's actually a Kaisa jungle and they pick something else into the Caitlyn. I mean, that is totally acceptable. Kaisa jungle does actually have a pretty good win rate. Uh, I play it myself and I really like it. Uh, you do manage to hit that Q and E procs off three items as well. So uh, it's pretty strong. We'll see in the end. Caitlyn Morgana, however, absolutely disgustingly lane dominant. So that's going to be a nice pickup for Robert Cern and Switch TP Cyber. And I do like the Morgana with that Nami. Uh, you know, as you're able to Black Shield the bubble and the ultimate, and a lot of the overall you know, potential Nami has to trade in lane just off that one ability. And a Victor coming in here for Pop Tart. Four champions in four games. Uh, potential would like to see him maybe pick the Corky way if he plays it, but we'll have to see. Uh, if I had to guess, they're going to ban out the Corky in this phase to kind of keep him off that. As I think Dexon has looked so strong on it so far. Does still have the Velkaz available to pick, so could go with that as well. What I want to see from Pop Tart is if he's going to go for the um, tankier Victor build that was popularized, I'd say about a month and a half, two months ago, where you'd go for the Iceborne Gauntlet and Abyssal Mask. 
We could, I think with the Abyssal Mask uh, area of effect being lowered uh, down a little bit, I think we're probably just going to see like a standard Victor build running uh, Fleet Footwork as this Keystone. Ranger Bank coming in as well. This is a Kaisa jungle. This is going to be the ultimate bamboozle, banning out another jungle ban of phase two. I, a part of me is really hoping for it to be that Kaisa jungle, but. Well, they're just pinching the jungle roll currently. Zach and Olaf taken away on top of that Rengar, so that's four jungle bans currently. Might see another after um, NCS makes their final ban. Mm, Nidalee, so that is going to be five junglers banned in this pick and ban phase. And then Italy is such an interesting ban as well. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't call her strong right now. Would you? No, like, I think if you have a very good mastery of the champion, she has the potential to be strong. But on her own, I don't think she is. Um, and I feel like in, you know, into this Swain, into this Morgana, in this like mid game, exactly. Like she doesn't offer much. We'll see what kind of jungler he ends up on. The oh, Rex size uh, would decide to leave up. Haven't seen Rek'Sai in a hot minute. Not really been in the meta for quite some time now. And we do see the Rek'Sai coming out as the ban last game. So I'm interested to see why they decided to change that Rek'Sai ban for in Italy. Uh, who I think, you know, if I was to see anybody, I'd rather see a, a non-taking Italy. Ivern coming out though. War Penguin. This is looking like a scary comp. So many just binds. Anything lands, Swain's gonna be able to pull him in. They need something else that's high damage, though, out of this mid lane. Oh. And we're going to see the Yasuo. I was talking about earlier. I'm so excited. We just know what we see Teemo here. Come on, Let's Yasuo. Go. Let's go. Yeah, show me that Yasuo. Kled, Ooh, though. Kled. I'm just excited. This team is all about going ham right now. So they're most uh, likely going to flex that Swain to the mid lane, then. A pretty good pickup, I think, especially in his Victor here as well as Swain can do a lot of his damage while walking around uh, fairly quickly and only has to really stop to cast. So he will not be hit as easily by the second part of that Victor E. Are we going to see Renekton, Renekton into the Kled? And... Oh no, it's going to be Singed. So this is actually kind of a iffy matchup for the Singed. Uh, Kled does have a lot of ways to stay onto the Singed, even after the flip, especially if you do manage to land the E or Q. Uh, the Ignite coming in top lane, it looks like, though. Kind of excited to see what happens here. Double TP versus Ignite Cleanse. This is looking really scary for Auburn here, though, as they will not have the opportunity to play the map. Singe uh, should be going for Unsealed Spellbook, I believe. So we'll have the okay. option to trade later. Okay. I've also seen some Singe run Ares. That's probably where I, my confusion came from. I'm hoping that's the case. Is he going for that early kill on Kled while he's still kind of weak in the pre-level you know, pre -level 5 phase? But let's see as well. Victor running Cleanse. Uh, is pretty pick up here into the Morgana, Swain, and Ivern. Uh, but it's still going to be kind of scary as he's going to lose a lot of lane tempo to the Swain. And Victor still needs to stay out in lane for an extra 100 gold to make 1,200 gold before he can back for his first upgrade to his Hex Tech Core. Um, which, especially in a Swain who can, if he wants to go for that greedy Swain build, can back for tier and then do Rod. Which you will see a lot of Swain's build. Uh, I know Huni actually built it in the playoffs for Echo Fox and did fairly well with it as well. Uh, it is a little bit more scaling, but I really enjoy that build. It does uh, mean you have, have a much weaker laning phase, so it's going to rely on playing well against the Victor of Pop-Tart to actually do that. I mean, I think with how Dexmas has played into Pop-Tart these last two games, if he can keep on the back foot, I, I really don't think there's much of a problem for that. We'll have to see uh, if Auburn's been able to kind of like refocus themselves, uh, or if they're going to kind of stay with the same mentality and, and just lose it once they fall a little bit behind. I do want to see if NC State can keep up this team fight and they've had in these mid game team fights. The shot calling has been fantastic for when to go for these re engages, and they've actually been able to turn a control over the game into an engage that has been re engaged and then re engaging on it uh, in these kind of back and forth team fights. And I think that they can continue to do so uh, with their spear shot calling. And I think they have a much stronger team fight team here as well uh, with that Swain AoE, with that Ivern shielding. Uh, and you know, we'll see an early redemption probably come out of the Ivern as well. I think that there's going to be so much just protection onto this Caitlyn that she's going to have so much free poke and free damage coming out. Uh, because eventually you're going to hit the point where Singe just doesn't... You, you can realistically just ignore Singe at a certain point in the game. Uh, especially once it gets late enough because he'll never be tanky enough or damagey enough one or the other based on his build. So I'm, I'm just going to see if he goes for some early AP here to kind of do more damage and be able to, to make that TP play happen. 
Uh, the scary part, though, is I feel like Ivern can be invaded by this Rek'Sai early on. So if Kark mm -hmm. can kind of get that off and put Ivern behind or counter jungle him well enough, and I think we're going to see probably standard lane starts here as well to keep Penguin from being able to do the, the buff start on Ivern. On the flip side, Ivern can look for invades himself. Anytime his smite is up, he can just instantly steal away a camp. So maybe we see Pluck and Penguin go for that early invade, try and steal some of the camps away from Rek'Sai and get himself off to an early lead. So a pretty standard strat is to um, go in, ward a buff if you can, and then try to steal the opposite buff. You you start your buff, walk over, take their buff, because by then their wards will have fallen off, and then go back to your buff. Um, so Ivern has a pretty good triple buff route. If you see if they just decide to go for a way to stop that, or if Kark reads into it and goes to you know trade buff sides. Rek'Sai does have pretty decent early clear with the Q cooldown. Uh, it will not be as fast as Ivern, obviously, with um, you know Smite available. But I'm interested to see what they decide to do there. Um, however, Caitlyn Morgana does have a pretty collapse as well, so it's kind of a risky invade, I feel, comparatively to into uh, Kaisa Nami. And Baba Hotep gonna have to show up this game. They've been constantly looking like the worst bottom lane since game two. Even in game one a little bit, they were able to only match up equally to Robert Cern, and it wasn't until the late game where Baba Hotep sort of popped off on that Zaya. Yeah, and I think we'll have to see as well uh, if this Caitlyn King can't take over. We are going to see as well what Boba Hotep decides to do for that Kai'Sa build. Does go fleet footwork here. Big fan of that, as it will allow him to kind of stay in this lane phase. But it was not a problem for Robert in the last few games surviving to this Caitlyn uh, as well with the Presti attack. We'll see if that actually, how that plays out. Um, or if realistically Boba Hotep is getting you know outplayed by Robert. And again, we don't see the Zaya or any kind of mention of the Zaya, which was such a strong force in the game one victory. For Auburn, uh, very interesting to kind of see the call on that as well, or if they just felt like it was too weak into this Kaisa. Mm -hmm. I'm paused at uh, 10. I am. We'll be momentarily. Long load screens. Love them. All right, I am now paused at 10. All right, awesome. And in three. Two, one. We're going to get ourselves onto Summoner's Rift here for game number four. North Carolina State versus Auburn. Already up to a 2 1 lead here, looking for game, or rather, match point with this victory. Auburn looking to bring it back to a game five, and looks like NCS I mean making an invade of some sort. So what you're looking for right now is you're looking for some of that early vision. Oh my god, how it, did that connect? There's no ward or anything. This is actually insane. There maybe there must I'm gonna actually go back and wow. There is no ward. There's still no ward. I thought maybe it's a visual bug, but there's no ward on anybody's cooldown I right think now. They just must have predicted that Singe would be in the top there. I think he's been in the uh, top side bush. Well actually no, that was oh, just he was joshing. Yeah, he, he was actually moving the entire time uh they caught him like mid like he didn't stay put and no wards have been popped for anybody uh the first yeah. time might just be a visual bug but that's actually crazy i'm just joshing and playing in the previous game so going off of the movements of their enemy in previous games wouldn't have really done it just kind of luck in the end i guess but that first blood for the caitlin now robert cern walking into lane with an extra pot and a dagger is going to be putting the hurt on at first, I actually thought it might have been Caitlyn starting her, her W as well for Vision and him just not noticing, but she did start Q. Uh, very interesting to see what's going to happen here. Whoppers. Truck. Just train with Truxy. Alright. Right. Not looking for anything too sneaky. Uh, Singed is looking to invade here, though. Getting it some vision does, down. Does spot out that he's done the blue buff. Nice little root there from Dextamus. 
Opera is having a bad go of it so far. Losing the trades onto Truxy as he gets flipped back. Poison just ticking down. He's gonna get knocked off of Skarl. And this is the point when Singe is like really strong into this matchup. Uh, is before he hits level 3 to 5, before he has all the abilities to really go for this hard engage. Uh, as this goes on though, once he gets that black blue Oh, Kark is here. He's gonna have to flash away Kark with the flash knock up. They are gonna flip him back and that's gonna be the second kill of the game going over to Kark. Using the vision they gained from that earlier access with Ivern so well here. Uh, really kind of liking that. They knew where Ivern was. They knew exactly the gank path they could take for that. Really well played here by Trexy and Kark. Fight in the river. He's gonna get rooted and pulled back. No real mana available for Dextamus, however, so they're not gonna be able to take that fight. Oh, the Binding does land onto Kaista. Gonna be taking a ton of damage after that trap. They do get some damage on that, but they did actually miss two CS for that trade. Um, still, though, a very sizable lead going into this right now. Really kind of showing how this matchup should be been going. Yeah, and another Binding Lands as well. And even with the Nami healing, currently sitting below half health. Just about out of mana on Commissioner as well. Below half health, 10 CS down. This is what we expected coming out of this game in game two. Offers again fighting with Truxty here. Kark is extremely low on the top side, so we won't see a gank from him. Rek'Sai still has not backed. Nope. Zoning off this wave so yeah. hard. Twitch Cyber might be walking up a bit too far. He's gonna have to flash over. Cathian Ring just about secures the kill as Truxy does get pulled back by Whoppers in the top lane. Bear Trap on a rope not offering nearly enough damage, however. Just jousts back through Truxy. He's gonna use the Violent Tendencies on him. Misses that fourth auto, though. Yeah, that's really the big damage from it. I'm being honest here, I think that, you know, bot lane might have lost a lot of their pressure, though, from Cyber having to flash over uh, for trying to zone off that wave. Whoppers does get dismounted from Skarl. Seems to be taking the... Oh, does get ignited. Truxy might die to the tower, though. Actually just barely makes it out with a sliver of health and gets the kill onto Whoppers. Such an interesting play here by Truxy. Being able to really kind of share some dominance even after that early kill. I think it takes a lot of mental fortitude to, to kind of get through a death like that and still, you know, feel pretty okay right now. And that's a pretty good wave as well to do it on. It will be pushing back towards Truxy. Um, they're now a little more even, even though Whoppers did also miss a bunch of XP there as well. Yeah, losing that XP is the big thing for Whoppers as well. Pled is so reliant on getting his charge available to him, especially in this matchup against Truxy. Being able to engage with that when you want to fight, it's going to be very difficult now for him to take any sort of trade with Truxy. And we are seeing to see a pretty good CS lead of 15 in the bot lane, uh, kind of building up those small advantages here. And that means that they will be able to back for BF significantly earlier. Actually can already back for BF in a little bit more than that already. <clears throat> Ooh, loses the cannon there. Whopper gets flung in and bear trap on a rope blocked by Truxy. Truxy. Uh, Rek'Sai's here again, up in the top lane. And that's probably gonna be a dead club. Really kind of taking advantage of like the advantages you have here. Uh, they do have a ward there. They do seem to spot it out as he does back up. But even then, I'm not sure. They have a good amount of damage here coming out uh, with the ability to switch tanks. And it's been such a long time since people have seen Rek'Sai. Ooh, ton of damage on Akaisa, getting a lot there, just about dying, he ends up having to heal. Oh, Bubble does land, trading nicely back onto Robert Sir, and Truxy might be caught out. Is trying to run away, has popped the ultimate, but Bear Trap and a rope gonna pull him back. Kark is here now, just gonna dissuade them from going back in. Pluck and Penguin gonna get knocked up, Kark gonna try and get him. Is actually gonna fall to Truxy, ton of damage from the poison onto him. He's gonna dismount. Whopper as well, try and just proxy the wave. And he gets the dismount right before Kled hits six, which is when he gets like that, you know, has to continue that engage. And you're seeing these Dark Seal stacks coming in big for Truxy being able to have some kind of damage here to follow up on. And they kind of decided we're gonna trade our bot lane for this top lane. 
And they're seeing some serious advantages with that right now. Yeah, and they're gonna have to. NCS's bot lane has really been one of their stellar performers over the series, Whoppers as well. So at least they're keeping him down now, the sub into the top lane with Truxy. Really helpful for them. I don't think it's interesting that we're gonna see, you know, Whoppers for the first time be really kind of down in this lane. Uh, the sub out into Truxy, very interesting. Uh, seems to be working out so far for him though. Does have the Tiamat now completed on his Kled, so at least have a little bit more wave clear. Commissioner taking a bit of damage. Infernal Dragon is the first Drake as well. So we'll have to I mean, see if teams put up some priority on that. I mean, right now I think you kind of want to. Uh, just in general, I think you, you have that pressure on the bot side. You can look to take that fight. And they also did, you know, they they know Rex had to go clear his red buff this time. They had the timer on that. They're actually pushing for first turret here. Yeah, they are going to look for that. Pops Daisy to tank it so that they keep the minions up. And that's going to be first turret going over at 8 minutes and 30 seconds. Two NCS. A really, a really strong play. Be interesting to go for the dragon here as well. Uh, Swain did just come back here. Uh, he is not going the greed build, just going for the rod build here. We'll have to see what he decides to do. And Whopper is going to be able to actually kind of minimize part of this gold deficit here. Um, just pick, if he picks up this entire wave. He might miss his cannon again, though. That seems to be what he's going to go for. Does he actually does secure a Truxy getting traded back onto multiple joustings to follow Truxy, but he's going to fall off Skarl. No I think if he tendencies up yet. Yeah, I think if well, he manages it does get the violent tendencies, he's going to be able to remount with one more auto. Does get the remount. Should have the charge Absolutely. available. Is going to go in. Truxy going to flash away, however, and avoid the lock on from Kled. And that is such an interesting path to take with that ultimate. Uh, it's kind of mind games, I feel a little bit. Truxy knew that he would expect, like, you know, Truxy's safest path was to go towards tower, but he knew, you know, I think Whoppers was like, well, he's not going to do the safest path because that would be where I'm ulting. I don't know. It's very interesting to see Trux get out of that. Uh, very well played though to kind of come back on this four whoppers though and that CS lead is now minimized from 20 down to only a couple Infernal Dragon is started up, but they have some vision on it. So they know they're there. Ivern is still in base. However They do have the Swain with this full stacks on the ultimate right now Yeah, Binding lands on Nanami super low gonna be secured by the Rek'Sai almost stolen away. Oh, Swain going to use his ultimate. Chaos Storm out as well. Demon's Ascension trying to contest with the Chaos Storm damage. Just trying to heal through it. Almost going to fall in the end. Binding does land onto Kark. Just going to be able to dig his way out of there. Oh, the bind, or the uh, bubble just missing because of the Black Shield. Killer Instinct back in, however. Twitch Cyber going to be dropping extremely low. The wave going to get the kill. Kark and Nami both using their ultimates there as well. And it's pretty even right now, even with the three kills up with that tower. Uh, just kind of looking at your advantage right now. I'm not fully sure who I'm going to give to you, who I think is going to be moving forward with this, but a kill advantage going forward for Auburn right now. But right now, I also think that with how strong that Caitlyn is getting, uh, and it does seem like Kaisa's going the crit build. Could be the death stance still. Oh yeah, you're right. Um, Truxy getting traded on to... Plucky Penguin, Pluck and Penguin rather, is here. Does have the daisy popped. Is going to try and get the slow, but not going to get it. Misses the binding. Is going to get dismounted. Is going in onto Whoppers, trying to remount. Has the violent tendencies. Is going to trade onto Clark, but he is going to kill him first. De Dextimus is here and will secure the kill under Truxy, but Pluck and Penguin extremely low, trying to get out. Has no flash available anymore. Super low. Pops are just going to be able to auto him down. Whew, and a lot of... <laughs> you know what? We're, we're going in this lane with Kled, and I think we have a lot of violent tendencies coming out already in that lane. We just how aggressive it's been. Five kills alone in the top lane, 11 minutes in. Yeah. And uh, I've noticed this just now as well. I don't know if you have tier on Nami. Oh, Bonnie actually lands onto top turret. So it's fine. actually a little common uh, with Nami's to build a little early. You don't actually normally build it into the Archangels until you absolutely need to. Uh, but it's really good to kind of let your team sustain out uh, for a lot longer. Uh, 
so it's it's it is a little more common than expected. They are trading the bot lane to top right now um, to kind of get that safety with that tower. And they do have Rift Herald up though, so we'll see if they decide to look for anything there. Rek'Sai on this top side though. Yeah, you're gonna be looking for something, but not gonna go for it quite yet. Organa leaving her alone. This could be really bad for Caitlyn though. They're lining could up for be. this. They are gonna knock him up. The instant killer instinct after the knock up. Gonna be looking for the kill. Flash in from Robert for Robert Cern. And we'll get it secured by Baba Hotep. They're dropping a lot of vision on this mid lane, but you leave this Caitlyn up here alone, and that's gonna be top turret probably going down for that. Yeah, Ivern is up here, the Morgana as well, but I don't think they can actually wave clear against the uh, Kai'Sa. Spot lane as well, Whopper is just getting bullied by Truxy. And the Rylai's completed for Truxy means it's going to be a lot harder for Whoppers to really do anything in this matchup right now. Yeah, actually Truxy looked like he's going to be starting up the proxy. Dexamus trading pretty heavily with Pop-Tart in the mid lane, taking a ton of damage from the Chaos Arm, uses the Demon's Ascension. Doesn't have it quite fully stacked, but Kark just gonna decimate him with the ultimate. And they get out both fractions of health bars left. They had the vision on it too, they saw him clearing it. They do manage to keep top turret alive, but they're just losing so much right now across the map Trussie in these going fights. for the dive, Whopper's taking a ton of damage, might not be able to remount in time. Flash away actually to avoid the pocket pistol. No remount for Whoppers and he's dead. Well, that's what happens here, though. Truxy really showing some dominance in this matchup. Uh, let's see what's going to happen if they do take this to a game five, as he will not have that counter pick to be able to go to. I do like this no, Singe pick out so far, though. It's really showing a lot of strength. Yeah, and looking a lot worse on the Kled than he has on the Nar in previous games. Robert Cern just stepping away from that bubble. Ivern is up in this top lane, so they might be looking for a dive. Is gonna pop the Daisy, going in under the tower, gonna give him the shield. We'll get the slow into Bubba Hotup. Won't land the binding, but will get knocked up in the end by Daisy and secure that kill. Truxy is here with the TP. Robert Cern extremely low. Mega Heese is gonna be applied. We're gonna get dark binding and not be able to find anything. And we do see the problem with the Singed, and that's the fact that you do have this Morgana, you do have this Ivern, and you're just gonna get rooted and slowed down for days. A very hard to get onto the enemy team. They are the keeping show. this tower alive as well. And they're letting Kled have some more free farm on the bot side, which is really good for their team. As I, I really think Kled's gonna be able to do more in these team fights uh, than the Singed. Uh, Trex is doing a, a really good job. Some harass coming down mid lane. I would like to see Whoppers actually start going tank, however. He's sort of built this Titanic Hydra first and without the Black Cleaver early on. I just feel like going the tank items is going to be more effective for him at this point. Uh, well, let's see. He could be just trying to go into that for a little bit of the health there for the Black Cleaver. I think um, you don't really have a lot of kill pressure without Black Cleaver Titanic before you go tank, especially as Kled. Uh, you're, you, you have some good base damage, but you really do kind of rely on having some kind of like additive damage. At 0-4, though, is it really worth it to continue building damage so far behind? Well, we've seen him actually have the option to, to deal with this kind of singed pick before and do a little bit more work up. Ooh, singed picking up the cannon mean there as well. But he's he's come close to dealing the singed at certain points in the game, and I think, you know, he's trying to work a little bit more towards that. And looks like they're going to be taking the second dragon here as well. Looks really good here on Auburn to do so. Yeah, an Infernal Drake and now a Mountain for them. Securing themselves the next Dragon of the game. Trying to get themselves a little bit more of an advantage. Only 2k up right now, so not an insurmountable lead, that's for sure. Yeah, that's what we saw in the last game. They, or in game two, they had the 2k gold lead. They came back up. The the Dragon's looking really good here, though. Overall, their their map play has looked pretty good. Well, let's see how they look in these team fights, though, which is where NC State has really shined so far is at these mid game team fights. Exactly. And Robert Cern, especially, is staying very safe in the fights, able to just continuously auto attack. Nice Titanic proc from Whoppers there to clear the wave, keep that tower safe for a little bit longer. He does a little time though. They might look to dive on the Rex is coming down. And the vision control in general from 
Um, Auburn just seems to be in better locations. Whopper can clear the wave here again. But the... I, mean, uh, I think at the very least, he does have wave clear for it. He and Singe can can maintain this 2v1. Um, Singe, because without realizing, he's actually going for the Leandries next. An interesting pickup here, looking to do the, the overall damage coming out with the max health and the increased damage over time of these fights. I actually kind of like that pickup for him to kind of maintain relevance while he's doing these, like, you know, just running through these fights. Yeah, I expect some tank items for him after that, come that front line for his team, and back up his free stats that he's getting with uh, the ultimate. And we are seeing more of an aggressive build here. Black Cleaver Warrior on Kark here on this uh, Rek'Sai. Looking pretty strong for him uh, as he's clearing a lot of his vision in the bot lane. He's a level 11 now with that rank 2 ultimate. He's quite strong right now. Yeah, 3 0 and 4 on him has been doing much better in the early game this time around than he did in his previous showing on Rengar. Bubba Hotup just trying to trade into Whoppers, but that's quite a bit of health on Scarl. And surprisingly, he's been able to keep this up in the 2v1 so effectively. I can't help but feel like this is in their favor as well. Caitlyn's so reliant on items. Kaisa as well, yes, but with that shorter range, walking into a Kled, Swain, and Caitlyn, I think it's going to be a lot harder for Bubba Hotep, whereas Robert just going to be able to stay at the back and get some damage off. And both teams are allowing their, you know, their losing lanes to kind of stabilize a little bit more. Uh, we do see a CS scrum between Kled and Swain is still... Or Kled and Sin is still quite high, but, you know, it's slowly getting down. There's only about 20 now. Same as the 20 that's going on with, you know, the Kai'Sa and Caitlyn. Whereas that was closer to a 40 CS lead, not even five minutes ago. So, kind of stabilizing is a little bit and, like, getting some farm where it needs to go. Um, and we do see the Black Cleaver coming out here for this Kled. Does land the Bear Trap on a rope. Gonna be pulling Truxy back, getting a lot of damage onto him, actually. Still has the charge available. Decides not to use it quite yet. And this is gonna come. Daisy is here, but in the mid lane, Rift Herald is there. I saw a really good sidestep on both routes. They do get the mid lane tower with that Rift Herald, however. So at least pick up an additional objective for Auburn. And really good to hear for them to kind of pick something up on the map for free. <clears throat> Whopper's oh, trying to trade it on the top lane, however. A lot of damage from him on it now. And we also kind of saw the Whopper can fight Trexy. Yeah, it's a little behind. He doesn't take like an exact fight. But you saw the damage coming through there with the Titanic procs, with the Tendency proc. Uh, that was before Leandries, which is now completed on Trexy. I think if he takes a fight with him now, it's going to be a different story. Yeah, I think he needs to kind of wait right now until he can get to that Black Cleaver and really kind of shred out any of that armor that those boots give him. Have to see what Truxy picks up as his first defensive item. Still the tier one boots as well, 20 minutes into the game for Whoppers. Usually you see people pick up those tier two boots by now. Yeah, I think his big reason is he's, he's just trying to rush into the two item spike where Clud really shines. And I think from there, he's gonna try to team fight. I think we're going to see him pick up this Black Cleaver, and he's going to try to look for an ulti where they force Singe to be delayed on the fight. Um, Singe may be still pretty impactful in that fight, but being able to get that, like, you know, getting a, a few seconds ahead on that play, I think is what they need to do. And with the Q, with the E, he can stick to somebody for long enough that I don't think it's that big of a problem uh, that he, you know, sits there. A lot of shielding coming out on that empowered Q. Yeah, the Abyssal Mask completed now from Pop-Tart, so he's going to be very healthy in these trades with Dextamus. So is this a... Yeah, I haven't heard too much of it. Is this the tankier build you were talking about? Is it go Abyssal Mask? Or... Yes. Uh, I don't think it originally had tier in it, but Seraph's Embrace is kind of a little bit broken currently. Um, but the idea is you get an Abyssal Mask and an Iceburn Gauntlet. You still do pretty consistent damage because of how much AP you get from your Hexcore item. But... Um, you're just pretty much unkillable. No fleet footwork for Pop-Tart, however, has gone with Summon Aerie. Which I think is a very interesting pickup. Uh, maybe he felt like he didn't really need it in this phase. Uh, I, I think it'll come out a little bit maybe for the AP, is what he wanted from that as well, if he wanted for this tankier build. Uh, if he decided he valued the AP over the attack speed for getting the Q off quicker. Yeah. 
Um, we are seeing the... no boots either, I've just noticed. So yeah, we are seeing the Death Dance Kaisa build we were talking about. Uh, that means their next ability they're going to go into will be the Ginsu's. I'm kind of excited to see how this is going to work once they hit that two-item spike, as it is so strong then. Might potentially go for the Nasher's Tooth second, now that she has the pickaxe and Q evolution. Have to see what Bubba Ho Tup wants to do as they secure another Mountain Drake. Looking really good for them. Uh, still with this 2k gold leader now, but they are going to trade that for this top turret. Yeah, the dragon stacking, however, is getting a little bit concerning. Going to be yeah, able to like... rush down Baron pretty easily. Well, I think, honestly, this is sound bad. I don't think they have a lot of damage coming out for that Baron play. They do have the double Mountain Drake, but realistically, is the only one doing a consistent amount of damage. But they might be able to actually trade a tier 2 turret engagement. No, he does land the wave. Nobody gonna go in after that. Actually, Kaisa using the killer instinct, but Commissioner's already down, out of commission, and the Chaos Storm trying to get fucking Penguin is gonna get Void Rush. He's trying to go back in on Pop Tart, and Robert sent Cern just laying down the damage. Bubba Hotop dropping as well. This fight is going completely wrong. Trux is here now, trying to pick up some kills. He's getting two for himself, trying to turn this around. Dextimus has arrived. Whopper is a little bit too deep, trying to remount with the Violent Tendencies, is going to fall. Dexamus does pop the Demon's Ascension, is going to get Pop-Tart pulled back in. Should easily be able to secure this kill onto him. Actually, ton of damage from Pop-Tart, but in the end, it's a 4 for 4 when everything's said and done. I think we see two major misplays in that fight. One, Whopper's doesn't ult correctly. <laughs> he ulted, like, maybe 100 units in front of him and actually fails to connect with it uh, once Pop-Tart made the flash to get out or cleanse, I believe he cleansed actually, uh, to keep walking forward. Uh, so he actually misses the ult, does not get the shielding, and you see him go down without being able to get the rest of the damage down on the pop start. We also get to see Dextimus coming in so late to that fight. I think he was yeah. actually walking in from base here. I think we see a whole different fight when that gets there, but Robert, so strong in that fight, pumping out so much consistent damage, uh, more than Bubba Hotep right now. Yeah, with the Infinity Edge and the Static Shiv now just about finished the Rapid Fire Cannon as well. Once he has that, you're kind of hitting that point where Caitlyn becomes just this ungodly beast to walk into. And they give blue buff over to Morgana. I think that might have been a mistake. Potentially. Dexamus, however, has the Rod of Ages, so a little bit more mana on him. Morgana maybe just wants to be able to throw out those Dark Bindings. Just trying to clear some vision here. Ooh, ton of damage onto Pluck and Penguin. Pretty good poke there. Gets him down to half health. It's gonna make them have to back out here. They do have a lot of vision. If he backs, they could look to rush this down. Maybe. Truxy on the bottom side of the map, just proxying the wave. Whoppers has arrived to steal away the minions from the tower. Nami, but only clear out a lot of this vision here. I want to talk about the vision game right now. Um, for his bottling, Clyde can continue to keep pushing. He does not have TP, but he will have ultimate up soon to kind of get closer to that. But it seems oh, like Dexamus gonna have to flash away. Almost caught up by Kark. The wave is gonna go wide, and Demon's Ascension is popped. Just trying to walk away from this. Not gonna be able to do too much. Trades a little bit of damage back on the Kark, but blows his own ultimate for it. Oh, the root does land onto Kark. He's actually gonna be falling here. Ace in the hole gonna secure that one. And a really strong play. Taking out the jungler. They can look to pressure for the mid turret here. They have the inside track. Kled is already pushing it. This is a really good move if they can manage to get this turret out. Uh, as they will stop the backs oh, here. The binding actually gonna land on Pop Tart. That's huge to keep him there. Gonna land another binding up there. And Truxy as well getting rooted up. Robert Cern just laying down the damage. Trying to pick up one kill. Gets one for Dextimus. The charge is coming in as well. Isn't gonna connect onto anybody, but they've picked up two kills here. And they and might actually the be able to get the Baron. We were talking about it before, and NC State is so good at this mid-game team fighting. They know exactly where to go for and when to actually make their engage. And we see it right there perfect in these last two fights. They came from a 2k gold lead uh, on Auburn, now a 2k gold lead on himself and the Baron buff against a team that has double Mountain Drake and an Infernal Drake. There is no reason that they should be in the driver's seat right now, except they outplayed them so hard in these team fights. Yeah, and Dextimus getting away from Kark and then catching him out in return is really the big story of that here. 
Dexamus actually level 16 on his Swain as well, so he's pretty massive at this point in the game. That and I want to talk about again, Truxy's Swain pick, really good in lane. We, it's 6-3, and three. you can't say it's a bad pick, but we're seeing the problems at the end of the opposing team. You saw Caitlyn, you saw Morgana, you saw Ivern, and you saw him right there. He got Ivern queued, then he got uh, Morgana queued, and then he also got trapped in the middle of both of those. Like, he didn't move for a solid 4 or 5 seconds. And that's something with no real range utility for his team, unless he's already been in that area of the map. It was just so bad for him because he was so ineffective in that fight. Might need to consider swapping out the flash for a cleanse at this point with how much CC there is. I don't actually recommend it, but. <laughs> yeah. And now I think we're also seeing the point in the game where Whoppers can just fight Truxy. Uh, Truxy has very little armor, and it is Black Cleaver. He's got enough MR now. Um, Caitlyn gets some good poke. Truxy has found Whoppers, however. Commissioner up here as well, trying to commission a kill for himself. Whopper's just gonna be able to get to the wall, should be able to flash out, dodges away from the wave. He's just stalling for time here. The rest of his team is on the way. Doesn't use the charge before he falls off. Trying to remount, is just about to get up, but is gonna fall instead. But they're gonna, they might, mm, they decide to back out here. They're gonna go for this dragon. Uh, I mean, I had a good idea here. They did end up having to take that. They did not have a wave in a position to push while that fight was going down. They're just waiting for them to come down. Truxy. Walks past them, they're gonna go on to Kark. Boba Hotup is trying to run away from Daisy. Binding lands onto Twitch TV Cy Cyber. Is gonna use the Zanyas. Soul Shackle is gonna land the root onto Boba Hotup. Is gonna get pulled back in, have to flash away. So they trade one for one currently. And they're taking that Binding fight 4v5. Exactly, the Binding lands again onto Pop Tart. Is gonna use the cleanse, but pulled back anyways. Ton of damage out from Baba Hotep trying to carry this fight. Truxy running in, mega adhesive onto onto uh, Robert Cern. Baba Hotep going to secure that one as well, and they're going to be able to pick up this Infernal Dragon. That's going to be two Infernals and two Mountains. You now have to four take a... Auburn. You have to take some time and just think about overconfidence there. They go for one for one. They continue to chase it down 3v4 at this point. Kais has had enough time to stack up that Rage Blade. I, I'm not fully confident in what they decided to do there, but... It did actually turn back here. It's still a 2k gold lead for NC State, but that is four dragons. Four of the best dragons you can ask for 30 minutes into this game. Uh, and and I'm... I believe we're going to get five dragon spawns in this game. It's going to be close. I didn't see the exact timer on when it went uh, down. No, I'm next one is Elder. Up. Yeah, they were... It would have been, I think it was about 10 seconds too late for that. But still, though, if you're Auburn, I mean, that your win condition is Elder at this point. Elder Dragon with Kaisa. Uh, is just going to be absolutely insane. And I'm not sure if she's going to go on hit because she looks to be building into some armor. Uh, probably going to be getting Angel? a Guardian Angel if I had to guess. Yeah. I could also see her going into, after the GA, a, a Runins instead of... Uh, I just feel to proc that passive, especially if they manage to get this Elder Dragon. Yeah, and the thing about these fights is they're not getting onto Bubba Hotep. You saw him at the front of the fight there last time around, and he still just manages to survive, kiting around the fight, doing damage. And if they can't get him down, it's going to be really difficult to win these fights with how much damage he has as Kaisa. Overall, the towers still speak a pretty large volume here as well, with only one outer tower still remaining. Um, they might be trying to rush down the mid lane, though. They're going to be looking to force this fight. They do have the charge available, so they might come in on the backside. Voidseeker goes wide. They know they're in the mid lane there, so they could look for the side engage. Bubble does land. Charge is going to come in. Is going to connect onto Truxy. Everybody's caught in the wave. Ton of damage coming in from Bubba Hotup. Trying to take down Whoppers. Chaos Storm coming in onto everybody. Another bubble lands. Twitch TV Cyber going to be dropping as well. Whopper falling now to Demonic Ascension. Not enough from Dextamus. Bubba Hotup extremely low. Will get killed by Robert Cern. Firing away. Pop Tart is going to flash in and actually get the kill onto him. Only two members left alive for NCS now. Bubble gonna land onto Ivern, and he is the last one alive and not for long. And that was the fight they wanted. They utilized Namiult so well there with that choke point, getting all that singe poison onto everybody in the enemy team. This actually might be the game. 40 seconds, 12 left on Morgana, who died very early in that fight though. But just looking here, gets the Zanyas picked up now. They're at least getting him off that, and so much pressure. Yeah, and the angle they engaged from is the big question for me. They could have just charged down the lane instead opting to go through the tiny corridor against a Victor, a um, Isa, and an Ami and Singe. 
does actually get the kill on the Singe. Is gonna drop herself. Whoppers is here now, trying to clear out the waves. They're at least gonna stall out the game. And this victor is so big right now. The flash QE, I'm getting like flashbacks to double lift at worlds right now. If you're Robert Kern, that is such a tilting thing to happen to you. Yeah, and um, just the amount of damage now on that victor. Really need to be careful of him as well, not just the Kaisa who's trying to buy the Nasher's Tooth now. Just about add enough gold for it, I believe. And is very strong in her own right. I really do think that, you know, looking here at this Kaisa, she may not have the kills, but I really think she's been putting out the damage here, especially on a Dextamus and Penguin when they do come in for these fights. On the bright side for NCS, however, there's no real designated tank for um, Auburn. So the Bloodthirster being picked up by Robert Cern doesn't really have to get a last Whisper. Yeah, I think uh, you could even go into double lifesteal here if you really wanted to, uh, or a Death Dance your own. I think it's might actually be better here than a Bork. The Executioner is in the end. Oh, actually? Goes to okay, goes to last Whisper instead, so... Not terrible, we'll allow you to take down um, the armor here on the Singe and this Rex a little bit more. Uh, as Singe is trying to stick to you very heavily, I assume it will be a mortal reminder in the end. The Nami healing a little bit annoying, so I can see the reason for that there. A little bit and of a fanatic bush track going on too. They need to be a little careful here, as if any mistake here will allow them to just decimate this Baron. That Kaisa build with the Nashers completed is gonna do so much to this Baron if they can get onto it for even a second. And Victor and Kaiza coming from base now. Truxy is going to get binded up. Charge coming in. He is caught out. Wave going to try and save him. Is going to get pulled back in by Swain, unfortunately. Demonic Ascension blown too. A lot of ultimates used, but the kill onto Singe means they get the chance to start this Baron. And that kill onto Singe is so good for Robert here, as that gives him so much pressure off in a fight. Yeah, Baba Hotup on the side, however. Pops out as well. They're going to be fighting around this Baron, and Cled going in first. Rek'Sai just about to fall, Kark is going to get away. Baron is picked up by NCS, and they're going to be absolutely decimating Auburn. Ace and the Hole going to find the kill, and they're going to be trying to end the game here, potentially. Flashing in from Whoppers, but the flash over the wall from Commissioner going to get himself to safety. Bubba Hotop going to get hit by the Caitlyn. 90 caliber net to get flash forward, actually going to secure the kill. <clears throat> All right, we'll see the items here though. They did manage to get the Baron. They will be going through top here. I don't think they think they can end here uh, with only seven seconds left on the Swain. But I think, or seven seconds left on the, I keep saying Swain for Singe, I don't know why. But I think <laughs> they can be able to look for at least double in hip here. After they come back, they can get this one and then reset fairly quickly with 19 seconds left on everybody else. I, I'm really enjoying so much damage onto that tower right there. Yeah, and Truxy might not actually be able to stand up to it. Only one real armor item, the Righteous Glory providing some, but look at the cannon minions have two barreled up minions and just firing away on that inhibitor. That's what I want to talk about as well, though. I think we've mentioned is a synergy for NC State is going to be the Ivern Caitlyn. Uh, Caitlyn's headshot does proc twice as much when you're in a bush, uh, so I kind of oh, really enjoy yeah. the play. Yeah, I didn't notice it until right there. I think it's the first time they've really utilized it uh, outside of maybe that last team fight. That's always like a small part of the passive you forget about because it's such a small use case that you actually get it. Yeah, and I think in this case, like, I mean, you, I mean, it's such a large damage increase, uh, with such as much attack speed, getting it every third attack rather than every sixth is absolutely bonkers to me. Yeah, especially now that she's reached full build, the mortal reminder completed, so the healing going to be negated for Kaisa and Nami. They're going to be looking for this Elder Dragon here. I'm excited what's going to happen. It's going to come down to whether or not Truxy can force Robert oh, does to do anything. Does land the Empires onto him. Ace in the hole. He's going to flash over the wall. Demonic Ascension does secure it for Robert Cern. Charging that... in onto Pop-Tart. Pop-Tart extremely caught out, but is going to be able to flash away. Demonic Ascension is about to go off. And they're going to just be able to back off from here. Actually flip back in from Truxy. Whopper is super deep now. Truxy, you do not want to get that... Pled in there as Robert Cern just chasing down Pop Tart, going after him. No flash available to chase. Whoppers dismounted. And right, and right now, if you're NC State, you can taste that trophy. That pick 
will get them the Elder Dragon. That is a game-winning pick right there. They might actually be looking to stay off the Elder Dragon and go for this mid lane turret. They know the Baron is more important for them right now because they don't have any dragons to utilize with this Elder. It's more getting the Elder off the table for the enemy team to try to sneak at any point. And this is a large double cannon minion wave. Yeah, TP as well to keep the minion alive. They're going to be looking for this inhibitor at the very least. Still one second left on Baba Hotep and 25 on Truxy, so they can now back off to that Elder after securing the inhibitor. Yeah, Swing does have 20 seconds, so if they look to contest this Elder, they might be able to, but that is a fat wave in the top lane coming in, though, and a super wave at that. And a wave they're going to clear at the bottom here. They're going to take this so quickly, though, with that Caitlyn. And not dropping a bush on him this time, but still able to melt it. There goes the Elder, and there goes the recalls. And they're going to give this to Swain here, probably to hit his last item here, because he's going to be building a wrap cap, if I had to guess. Yeah, only 1,500 gold on him right now, so it's still a little bit off. This minion wave will help him. It's always so satisfying to see the chain lightning kill a few additional minions there. Yeah, I really do enjoy it. It's one of my favorite new abilities on the Swain rework here. I just taking that next wave here. I think that'll be really close to giving him that rab cap here, unless he decides to go with another it's, item just to finish it, it up. It's 2,100, isn't it? From having that one? Yeah, I think it's pretty close. It's 21 or 19. It might He's have been 2k nice. right now, so we'll see if he does actually finish the route on death cap. Does not get it yet. Still in base currently. Okay, Looks like so... he's actually purchased a um, pot and elixir. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he might have been a couple hundred off. Uh, I think the 1900 might have been back when it had the old build path. Yeah. Could very well have been. He's going <laughs> to head up towards this top lane now. Has the TP available? They think they do have Victor Wave Quiver, but they do have Clay pushing down this in the top lane right now. Oh my no, god. Cheeky. Truxy's the tank. Yeah. Wow. And he has a Thorn Mill, Righteous Glory, and Tabby. Insane Victor's amount of damage from this Caitlyn. Enough shielding on Pop-Tart to keep him healthy there. Finding gonna go wide. And Dextimus has joined the team, deciding not to use the TP. Instead, just to siege up around this final inhib. Oh, the Binding lands, cleansed instantly by Pop-Tart. Wow. It does come out, but Robert Cern just doing tons of damage. Truxy is going to flip him back, however. Is there going to 90 caliber net backwards? Everybody's just jumping in onto him. Flopper in the front line, and Truxy's going to drop as well. Dexamus has already killed Clark. And this fight is going absolutely awful for Auburn, as Dexamus secures another kill for himself. That is the double. That's going to be the inhibitor, and that's probably going to be the game. Yeah, they have a wave on the top lane. They're going to look for triple inhibitor here. Play a little safe, though, as they don't have everybody right now. Oh, Pop-Tart caught. That is going to be the kill onto him. This looks like it could be the series going over to NCS. Oh, my God. Kate flashing in for the double kill. So much damage. Robert Kern's got to feel it this time. This game was him. This game is his chance to prove, you took my Kai'Sa? No, 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 no. You're going to regret that. And he just pops off on this Caitlyn. And on the back of their mid-game team fighting skills, NC State's gonna take the championship. Huge game from North Carolina State. Bottom lane playing fantastically, mid lane as well, making up for that huge deficit in the top lane that Whoppers had accrued and just so wanna, beautiful team fighting from them. I wanna talk to you first off, if you had to like list an MVP of the series, like having seen all four games, who who would you give it to and why? I think plucking penguins, um, like just in terms of his ganking, always setting up his lanes in an advantageous state. Um, he got whoppers ahead in both of his games there. I think for, for me, it's got to be him. See, I, I got to go with Robert Kern. I think that he went even or slightly ahead as Kaisa three games in a row into losing matchups, and then. They finally adapt to keep him off the Kaisa, and he shows his best game yet, picking the counter pick that Bubba Hotep was not able to like do anything on. Uh, and I love the fact that he, he pops up in lane, is 30 CS up at 10 minutes in, keeps that advantage, hits that three item spikes, and then just team fights so much better than Bubba Hotep could on this pick. And like you see here, like Bubba Hotep three three six eight. Um, I think he was just really unimpactful, especially like when when the Singe is doing more damage than you, and you're at your three item spike as a hyper carry um, with this build. Yeah. I think you really should have to look at something there where maybe it should have been out the Kaisa because clearly I don't think Bubba Hotep was comfortable playing it, uh, especially in this kind of scenario. 
I did yeah. really like Trexy coming in there on the Singe, though. I think that was probably the highlight of my, this game to me, was coming yeah. in with this, this pocket pick. Kirk did have a very good early game, but he couldn't turn it into anything either. The Rex side just seemed to fall flat once they were out of the laning phase. Well, I think we kind of talked about it a little earlier with the, with the Jarvan, and it's, you know, you build these kind of bruisery junglers, and they have a good early game, and they have an okay late game, but that mid game, that like after they've built their two damage items before they get tanky, they don't really do much. And I think that was the case where he just, he couldn't, he wasn't, didn't have enough, he could stay on Robert Kern. Robert Kern had enough damage at this point where he wasn't, he was good enough and had the healing from the Bloodthirster that every time he tried to get onto him to, to do that damage with Trexy, uh, Robert Kern could just sit there and auto attack. And he was healing up so much more and just deleting them. Actually, uh, I think I looking at the damage, the only person coming close to, actually two people, 44k damage most in the game on that Caitlyn, and then 43k on the Victor and 39k on the Singed. Yeah, I think Singed really popped off. I, I haven't really thought about it, but Leandry's on Singed is so good with that Rylas. Just so much personal health damage coming out there, and a little bit more damage from the actual poison the longer he's in combat. Uh, such a huge fan of that. Uh, I do want to also point out, uh, I, I do actually think Saber was pretty solid there as well. He had some really good black shields uh, that would have stopped a lot of the engages and Nami ults coming in here for Robert Kern or Whoppers to get this engage off on. Uh, and I do also want to highlight Dexmas getting that pick onto Bubba Hotep that got them that second inhibitor and got them that other dragon mm -hmm. as well. I really All around fantastic performance from um, NCS. All right, I think that's going to be all from us here, right? Uh, unless you yeah, have anything else to talk about. It should do it for us this evening. Uh, thank you to Papa Sims for stepping in for game number one, and thank you, Radiant, for coming in for games two to four. Really appreciate it. And uh, that's going to do it for us this evening. Congratulations to North Carolina State on winning the final. Yeah. All right. I believe that's going to be it. Any final words from you? Uh, yeah, I do think that both teams played very well. Um, I think that this this loss can be a good thing for, for Auburn to kind of like see maybe their weaknesses with their drafting. And mm -hmm. I'm excited to see what they're going to be able to do in the future. Agreed. They did have some very nice teamwork and early gameplay. So it can only get better from here. That's going to do it for us tonight. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And we'll see you next time.